I'm with Molly Baker from the Office of Veterinary Public Health. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, we're here to talk about bed bugs today. And first of all, just what are bed bugs and what do they look like? So bed bugs are uh, a small wingless insect and um, they feed, feed primarily on human blood. Um, and in terms of their life cycle, um, there's several stages that they go through. So they start with an egg uh, and then progress through five juvenile stages and then we have the adult bed bug. At each one of those stages, they're gonna look very different and be, of course, different sizes. As an egg, they're very small, um, and even the first stage juvenile, so about the size of a poppy seed. Okay. As they grow through the juvenile stages, they get progressively bigger, and as an adult, they're about a, the size of an apple seed. Okay. Uh, in terms of coloration, that also um, changes as well. So the eggs are, again, very small, but they're um, white tubular structures, and so, if you don't know what you're looking at, they're kind of like crumbs on a surface. Mm -hmm. So you can easily overlook yes. them or mm -hmm. not, n not necessarily um, regard them as something important. Right. The juvenile stages, when they're really young, they're sort of clear uh, in color and progressively get darker brown as they grow. And then as a full, fully developed bed bug, they're sort of a mahogany brown color. Okay, and where are we most likely to be exposed to bed bugs? So unfortunately, bed bugs can be found in most places in the community. <laughs> um, so their uh, primary um, meal source is humans. So anywhere that humans are and where we congregate, they're likely to be found. Mm -hmm. So our homes, you know, schools, daycares, long-term care facilities, hotels and motels, mm -hmm. um, those are all sort of high risk areas, but there are other areas in the community that can be affected as well. So um, some less common ones include workplaces and office buildings, churches, uh, movie theaters. So mm -hmm. um, all of those places have a lot of people coming in and out, a lot of personal belongings being brought in and sort of intermingling. And so you can have plenty of opportunities for uh, transmission and spread of bed Not bugs. necessarily just in the beds. Correct, <laughs> correct. Contrary to the name. Yes. And uh, what kind of health risks do the bed bugs pose? So the one bit of good news, um, if there is any that I can share <laughs> about bed bugs, is that they don't transmit disease. Here in Missouri, we're no stranger to uh, disease transmitting insects like mm -hmm. ticks and mosquitoes, right. but bed bugs thankfully don't have that same reputation. Good. Although, you know, their bite is not gonna make you sick, directly, um, there are a couple of things that can happen. Anytime you have a, a break in the skin, whether it's an insect bite or a cut or a scrape, there's always the potential for a skin infection to occur mm -hmm. as a result of that break. Other in impacts can include things like anxiety um, and insomnia mm -hmm. for someone who's dealing with an infestation in their home, especially. Right. Um, and so, you know, over time, the longer someone is dealing with those kinds of um, impacts, that can take a toll on a person's overall health. Definitely. And what types of precautions can be taken? So as I mentioned, bed bugs, um, you know, are found where people are found and they're easily um, transmitted uh, or spread through personal belongings. So coats and bags and purses. Um, and so um, a, a common way that people are um, exposed to bed bugs or encounter them is in travel situations. Mm -hmm. um, and so I always tell people if you're traveling, um, you know, be sure and check your accommodations mm -hmm. um, for signs of bed bugs. So for example, in a hotel room, um, hot spots would be anywhere around the bed. So that okay. includes the headboard, the mattress, especially the seams of the mattress, mm -hmm. side tables or furniture near the bed, couches and chairs. Okay. Um, those are all sort of high risk areas where bed bugs have plenty of hiding spots and maybe maybe lurking. You may not see them um, when you first take a look, but as you pull back the seams of the mattress or look behind the headboard, you may see evidence. So in addition to travel exposures, um, something that I think people don't commonly think about is um, you know, garage sale items, uh, thrifted items or items that are picked up off the curb for reuse or refurbishing. Mm -hmm. um, those types of items can also be high risk um, for being infested with bed bugs. So um, I encourage folks if, if they're interested in doing those kinds of things or partake in those activities frequently that they check those items really carefully before they pack them into their car or bring them into their house to right. prevent the spread of bed bugs. Okay. And if, if people do have an infestation in their house, is there good, way to, good ways to treat the home? Yeah, so um, bed bugs, the other good news is that they are treatable. <laughs> um, and so um, I always encourage people to consult a pest control professional mm -hmm. um, if they think they have an infestation. Um, the reason for that primarily is to make sure that it is a bed bug. Mm -hmm. So there are some bugs that do um, look sort of like bed bugs or can be mistaken for bed bugs by people who aren't trained right. entomologists. Um, and so it's always a good practice to have them um, confirmed so that you know you're treating the correct pest mm -hmm. with the correct methods. Okay. 
Um, for bed bugs, um, there are a couple of treatment options. So um, the first would be chemical sprays, um, and then there's also heat treatment available. And so the cost um, for treating bed bugs can unfortunately be kind of expensive, um, but you know it's going to depend on where you're located and which service you offer or which service you receive. Okay. Um, that'll that's going to determine the cost. Okay. And are bed bugs reportable in Missouri? So <clears throat> it really depends on the type of situation. Um, so a, a good example of a reportable instance um, would be if bed bugs are encountered in a lodging facility, mm -hmm. like a hotel mm -hmm. or a motel. Okay. Um, those kinds of complaints can actually be sent to the local health department in the county where the facility um, is located. Mm -hmm. um, some other types of facilities like long-term care facilities, mental health facilities, daycares, um, those kinds of um, facilities may be regulated by other divisions or other agencies in the state. Mm -hmm. um, my office specifically, we typically handle calls that are related to bed bug infestations in private homes okay. or rental properties. Mm -hmm. And so in our case, um, those types of complaints are not reportable. So there's no formal tracking system. Um, there's no investigation that occurs. Um, you know, when those folks end up calling us, uh, you know, our role is just to provide them with informational resources about bed bugs and about how to handle an infestation that they're dealing with in their home. Okay, very good. And speaking of, you have great information on our website. Yes, um, so uh, our website is, um, has been redone fairly recently mm -hmm. and has plenty of information about bed bugs and um, you know if there's something that's not on the website that we can um, help address then give us a call and we're happy to help. Okay very good well thank you so much for sharing thank this information. You.